So I thought I'd give a little update from the garden. Uh, the grass has gone absolutely crazy. I have a suspicion that this isn't the grass recovering from summer, but actually it has to do with the seed that I planted last year. So last year I was, I was seeding this whole lawn pretty heavily and nothing seemed to happen. Uh, and, and now it's all gone uh, haywire. So I, I think that this might be what we're observing. Uh, all of the trees are in, in, in great shape. Some of them are being overrun here. Like, oh, this guy. Yeah. The boxwood. So the boxwood is starting to change its uh, foliage. Everyone else is in, in quite good shape. Uh, I, I noticed some exciting changes in the uh, maple. So this maple is getting new little leaves here. And it was a skinny one here, but that, that one died. Uh, and, and back here. So with this maple... Uh, future bonsai, I, I need to cut it down some, but before I cut it down, either I, I want to come at it in spring or uh, I need to have some, some growth down lower to, to keep the branches alive. Uh, so I'll probably still have to winter this over before I can, I can cut it back in the spring. The, uh, the hawthorn's also doing, doing great and we're getting a, a lot of, a lot of new growth in, in the hawthorn. Similarly, uh, this end of summer has been very good for the uh, colossal uh, chestnut. So I've got all of this, all this is new growth. And the leaves are in much better shape than they were this summer. In uh, end of July, early August, the leaves were turning brown because of the, the sun. The citrus is all uh, in good shape. Uh, there were a lot of kind of misshapen leaves that were, were coming up, and I think that was, you know, just sun damage. Uh, but they seem to be happy. And this this guy, uh, this, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a little like a cherry bush. This, from here up, that's all new growth from uh, the end of the summer. So over here, the, the red twig dogwood is still looking really uh, pretty worn, but I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, if I can mulch it, it'll survive through the survive through the winter and, and the roots will have, have taken hold. Uh, this little plant, and I still don't know what these are. I would, I would love to hear from people if, if they can have any ideas. Uh, I see these all around in, in this Pacific North, Northwest. Well, anyway, the, the lower branches in many of these, well, actually this whole stalk and, and many of these uh, have turned yellow and the leaves have dropped off, but the others seem to be in, in fairly good shape. Uh, I think I might perhaps have to, to transplant this into a slightly bigger pot for the, for the winter. Um, again, I don't know what it is, but I'm hopeful that something nice comes out of it. Uh, the roses are, are looking good, so... I'll probably trim this back again before before winter uh, hits. But next year, I'm, I'm hoping to get a, a nice a bunch of flowers the way I did. The clematis is, is looking dreadful. Uh, this is brown everywhere. And, and like this, this, uh, this particular plant, this one, it's been around now for like four years. And uh, it's, it's completely brown. So I, I would have thought that this plant would have had its roots uh, deep. So I don't think that the brown is necessarily um, death. I, I mean, I assume this is, must be some type of dormancy. I, I don't know exactly what their life cycle is. Uh, and we have you know, a bunch of seed pods here too. So I, I let all the flowers uh, go to seed and, and we'll see if those, those take root somewhere. Uh, the bushes are starting to experience color change here and, and here as well. So this little uh, ginger-scented plant seems to be relatively happy. Not a lot of new growth in it, 
but uh, the leaves are in good shape, and hopefully it's it's uh, digging itself in. Uh, the wisteria is still going like crazy. I've gotten uh, vines now, so this this uh this vine, you know, came about must have uh, be end of July, and it's come up over, down and, and over. So that's, uh, you know, maybe uh, one and a half meters of vine growth in a month. And I, I've got several of those in here, and I've been focusing on getting the vines to uh, bind like here between the, uh, between the lattice, trying to, to build a, a structure so that as this... Uh, as this wisteria grows over the next several years, it uh, takes off. Some of the leaves are, are starting to change color a little bit, which I, I assume that is uh, just a, a seasonal change. It's, it's almost October here. Uh, got some, some insect damage. The uh, wisteria seems to be a, a favorite of the grasshoppers. They'll just hang out on the... Uh, on the lattice and uh, kind of blend in with the leaves. So over here, this is the uh, white, the white uh, lilac, and uh, it's looking great. There's uh, got a little, uh, got a little stink bug there, uh, but I'm getting some really nice, really nice growth. It looks like it's about to take off. I'm not entirely certain what its, its life cycle is and, and how these how these uh, grow in the end of the season. Uh, but down here, this new growth is is uh, very uh, inspiring. So I'm pretty sure that the white lilac's going to make it through the winter, especially if I, I give it a little bit of mulch before before uh, we get a hard frost. This is the uh, uh, two-color purple lilac, also doing well. Uh, it's getting these kind of growth buds, which I don't know exactly what's going to come out of that, but it's certainly a, a good sign. And then lastly over here, this uh, Tinkerbell. This one, I had one, one blossom, and now I, I've got a, a second, a second blossom, so... Uh, it's definitely doing well, and, and we've got probably uh, six to eight inches of uh, growth since planting it uh, in the ground. The hydrangea is, is also looking very good. We're getting uh, some lengthening and thickening of the stems, so eventually this is going to turn into a, a, a tree. There's a, a lot of uh, trunk damage back here, so I was hoping it's going to be kind of a half tree, and we'll keep it away from the house as much as we can. Uh, the flowers are, are gorgeous. So this is a pinky winky, so it's supposed to be a, a, a pink to a white, uh, kind of a, have a gradient. Uh, this year it's, it's uh, well, it's its first year here, so I'm hoping next year we'll get more, more growth and more blossoms now that it's in the ground. This is a, not in bad shape, it's handling the sun well, and lastly back to this, uh, this uh, weeping pine. I need to find out the right time of year to trim it back, uh, and also decide how I'm going to trim it back. So I want to get the get the growth out to the sides into the front some, and it, it's pretty uh, skew right now as it is. But it's it's in great health, and uh, just since it's been planted in the ground, we're getting, you know, we're getting six to eight inches of growth. And the, the last uh, couple blossoms here, this is the, uh, the pink uh, succulent. I can't remember what it was called. It was, like, it was something party. I, I've, got the, I've got the name inside. It's, it's, uh, it's in blossom. And I need to uh, you know, make sure I keep the, keep the juniper trimmed back. Got a little bit of mulch here. Uh, the other, the other 
uh, succulents. They're starting to get a little bit of color on them as well. See here. So that's that's gorgeous, and I'll I'll trim the trim the uh, flowers off at some point as well. This plant, which, you know, again, I don't know if it's a weed or a flower or both, uh, well, it's in blossom. So you can see there's little buds everywhere. And then when those open up, you get these kind of sizable purple flowers. And over in this one, we're gonna get a bunch of pink flowers. Uh, the uh, dragon's blood is also just in bloom now. And uh, some of these other succulents that are, are down on the sides, they're uh, blooming. So they got kind of an end of the year bloom. And uh, that's an update from the garden.